The National Chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Uche Sekundos, on Saturday presented the party's certificate of return to the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki. He said the party was delighted to have the governor, who he said has seen firsthand how the system and processes work within the PDP. The chairman also presented the INEC nomination form to the governor. The governor expressed his gratitude to the party, the chairman, and his co-aspirants for being gracious enough to take the painful decision to step down after meeting so much. He announced that he was running with his deputy governor, Philip Shuaibu. Two of his co-aspirants, Kenneth Imaswagbon and Gideon Ikini, also attended the event. Joining us from Benin, Edo State, via Zoom, is Buge Okiomoi, public relations strategist. Good morning, Buge. The governor in his yes, speech, thank you. Uh, his go the governor in his speech thanked his co-aspirants, but Tell us, do you think this was an easy journey for the aspirants to step down? You know, some of whom vowed that they would not step down for him, if, if you, you know, in the case of Kenneth Imaswagbo especially. Of course, of course, it wasn't an easy decision at all. You know, the process, you know, pursuing a governorship ambition is not, is not a small process. It's a project that starts years before the election itself, from speaking to party leaders, to speak, sourcing support of delegates, to selling your candidacy. So imagine people who started the process probably a year, two ago, going through the whole org, getting everything that has to be done, on, going around the whole state, canvassing both candidates and delegates, and 24 hours before that process is supposed to come to a logical conclusion, somebody comes from outside, in quotes, and demands for the ticket, and they have to surrender. You know, it's, it's, I mean, that can be an easy decision. At all. But apparently, politics is about dynamic. Politics is about negotiation. Politics is about recalculations and strategizing. And I'm sure all the aspirants haven't come together to have certain discussions with certain groups of people realize that probably the most strategic thing for the People's Democratic Party to do at that time was for them to step down for the government. But I think it's a sacrifice that Governor should appreciate it's a sacrifice that the people of a do state should appreciate. You know, it, it, it really was a very, a very sacrificial one on your part. It wasn't, mm. couldn't have been an easy decision at all. Right. Talking about people of a do state also, do, do you not think that moves like this uh, could or will discourage uh, you know, the people or even party faithful in the future? If I know that anybody can decide to just move on after we've vested so much trust and, uh, you know, belief, if you like, on them. Oh, of course, of course. Um, political calculations and the dynamism of the 2020 elections may have permitted such a thing to happen. But, I mean, begs common reasoning for anybody to think that it's a good idea for people who have been in a particular house laboring i mean the pdp had been in opposition for about 12 to 13 years and while some conveniently jumped, jumped ship okay, okay. there were party faithful there were party members who okay. stood with the party who stuck with the party who labored to build a stable and peaceful entity that the governor could actually take advantage of when it was time to have a situation where a day to that primary where their their choice in who will fly their flag was going to be established the governor comes in with people who include those they have had to battle with over three or four elections, people who, you know, were part of the group or class that they battled with to come into the party without appropriate discussions, without, you know, the, the, the process of the campaign is a very complex one. It's not, it's not what just happens. There has to be a lot of discussion. There has to be a lot of alignment. There has to be a lot of agreement. I mean, you are trying to collapse two structures into one. It is expected that discussions on how the new structure is going to be formed will work. You know, what does this group get? What does that group get? All of that had to have been discussed. But when you look at the rush, the, you know, the speed with which the governor's acceptance into the party was done, it has a lot of potentials to demoralize party faithfuls and to also affect loyalty to the party, commitment to the party. I mean, if I know that staying in a party for 12 years, working hard, and in one day somebody from outside can come, I mean, what, what inspiration do I have to remain committed? 
very huge one. It's not something that should have happened. Um, it could be excused now because of the dynamic particular election, but it doesn't help our democracy at all to have okay. parties, you know, run like that. There must, right. be, there must be reward for loyalty okay. and processes must be followed. Staying on politicians and cross carpeting, is there any concern that, you know, Obaseki, Obaseki returning to APC if the crisis in that party is resolved? What do you think? <laughs> that would be difficult to answer because you have to take somebody who knows Obaseki's heart to answer accurately. But analyzing the situation, there are, there are, there are factors that would encourage that. The, 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 the belief that if he wins, he might return to the APC. But when you also analyze from another position, you see that there are actually factors that will also support the fact that he is better remaining in the PDP. And I just give a few examples. The governor really wasn't a politician. He came into government in the Shomali administration as a technocrat. And his active politicking started at the last elections where he emerged as governor. So I can say the political family and friends that he has really had all his life being introduced into politics have been in the APC. And when we see the circumstances around his living in the APC, we know that it wasn't really a choice. He was almost basically forced out. Mm -hmm. And there was a battle for a governorship seat. So one can deduce that, okay, probably if he wins, he will want to go back to the environment he's comfortable in. After all, he has achieved his battle between the PNP platform. But that's on one side. On the other side, you know, when you look at the APC in Edo State, really, they are in a whole lot of crises. And there's, there's, it's, it's difficult to see a way out in terms of a resolution or solution. Presently, there were two factions in the APC in Edo State. The faction loyal to the government, the faction loyal to the past chairman, Adam Sushobole. The ESCO that was loyal to the past, to the governor, is the one that the court has recognized as the authentic ESCO. So the candidate that the court produced is a candidate that was loyal to the former chairman. So you are wondering, is the candidate who was loyal to the former chairman mm -hmm. going to work with an executive that was loyal to the public? Mm -hmm. The Looks APC like we're, we're really in, the... in a lot of crises, and I don't think it will encourage it will encourage. All right. Thank you so very much for your thoughts there, and do keep safe out there, sir. Sure, we will. Thank you so much.